System Overview. Welcome to the Moves SLC user training video. Moves SLC is a revolutionary, completely integrated intensive care unit, combining an oxygen concentrator, circle circuit ventilator, suction system, and complete vital signs monitoring into a single, compact, portable, battery-operated system. In this video, you will learn the basic steps to help you set up, configure, and operate Moves SLC. This video is not intended to replace the Moves SLC Operator's Manual. The Moves SLC Operator's Manual contains important labeling information and must be read by anyone intending to operate the Moves SLC system. System Orientation and Components Throughout the user manual, there are references to help orient the caregiver with the positioning of the Moves SLC unit. The following orientations should be remembered. The front end of the Moves SLC contains the patient connection panel. The rear end of the Moves SLC contains the battery compartments, the power connection and control, and the hydrocarbon filter. Note the left side of the unit and the right side of the unit. User interface screen and navigation keypad, the auxiliary communication port, external suction inlet, air intake for the ventilator blower, external O2 outlet and inlet, exhaust ports, ventilator cartridge door and release lever, the cartridge port with the ventilator cartridge, patient hose connections, inspiratory relief port, rear and front clamp mounts, warning lights, and the front and rear grab points. The Moves SLC allows you to monitor several parameters. On the patient connection panel, the following ports are available. The gas sample port, invasive blood pressure, SpO2, non-invasive blood pressure, ECG, and patient temperatures. Moves SLC Quick Start. Welcome to the Moves SLC Quick Start Guide. Lift the release latch for the ventilator cartridge door at the top front of the Moves SLC. Insert the ventilator cartridge, close the door, and lock it by depressing the latch. Install the hydrocarbon filter in the rear panel. Attach the appropriate breathing circuit to the cartridge door. Connect one end of the Nafion tubing to the sampling line. Connect the other end of the Nafion tubing to the Y piece. Connect the sampling line to the gas sample port. Connect the patient monitoring accessories to the Moves SLC. Do not connect to the patient at this time. Moves SLC must be operated with at least two batteries or one battery and connection to the power supply. As required, connect the power supply to the Moves SLC and inspect and install the batteries. Turn the Moves SLC unit on by pressing the power control button. Press the screen orientation button if necessary to orient the screen. Press the brightness button to cycle through the brightness options. Perform the system test procedures by following the on-screen instructions. The patient must not be connected to the breathing circuit during tests. Make the required patient monitoring connections between the patient connection panel on the Moves SLC and the patient. If using ABP, CVP, or ICP, connect the equipment to the Moves SLC unit. Zero the pressure on the transducers and the reading on the Moves SLC main screen prior to use. Attach the suction tube and suction bucket to the Moves SLC. In the setup menu, modify the settings as needed. Select the desired operating mode, ventilate, O2 supplement, or monitor only. To change any alarm settings, navigate to the alarms on off screen or the alarm limit screen. Attach the breathing circuit to the patient. Navigate to main on the screen select button to view the monitor screen. To view patient charts and trends of patient data from within the monitor screen, Select either of the waveform chart control buttons. To take NIBP manually, press the NIBP button. To use suction at any time, press the suction control button. When using suction, the system will not generate concentrated oxygen. 
Shut down Moves SLC by pressing and holding the power control button for 4 seconds. Remove all patient monitoring connections. How to operate the Moves SLC Controls on the Moves SLC On the navigation keypad, you'll find the following buttons. The Screen Brightness button to control the brightness of the display. The Flip Screen button to rotate the information displayed on the screen 180 degrees. The Alarm Audio Pause button to either silence all alarms permanently or temporarily. The Non-Invasive Blood Pressure Control button to start or stop a non-invasive blood pressure reading. The Suction button to start or stop suction. The Jog Wheel to navigate and make selections, and the Back buttons. Turning the jog wheel, clockwise or counterclockwise, selects an item in a circular manner going around the screen. Activate the selection by pressing the jog wheel. Press the back button to cancel an active entry. The display screen can be locked or adjusted to face either the right or left side of the Moves SLC to support operation from either side of the unit. Turn the catch 90 degrees to the left or right to unlock the screen and allow it to be raised into a working position. Use the flip screen button to adjust the display orientation as needed. Pre-use test instructions and launching sequence. Locate the power control button on the rear of the Moves SLC unit. Press the power control button to activate the unit. An audible alert is sounded, and if the system has been run within the last 30 minutes, the new patient screen will be displayed and will ask if the operator would like to configure the system for a new patient. If Yes is selected, all system settings, including alarms and limits, are reset to their default values. If No is selected, all system settings, including alarms and limits, are retained from previous use. Select No if the system is connected to the patient on whom it was last used and you want to keep all the previous settings. If there has been a data loss or corruption of previous data, the operator will not be allowed to restore previously used values. The No option will be unavailable. The operator will have to reconfigure the system manually to return to the previously used settings. System Test Screen After you have chosen to configure a new patient, the system test screen is displayed. You are presented with nine system checks, some of which require operator input. For further detail, refer to the Moves SLC Operator's Manual Quick Start Guide for Ventilated Patients in the Pre-Use Test Instructions section. Do not connect any sensors or the breathing circuit to the patient prior to performing system tests. Ensure that the ventilator cartridge has been installed for the system test. Do not operate the MOVES SLC system until all system test failures have been resolved and all tests have been repeated and passed. Only use skip tests if the system test has previously been performed and passed or the system has just been restarted due to power loss. Some tests, including RAM and firmware integrity, are automatic. Using the jog wheel, highlight and select the test which you would like to run and follow the instructions on screen. If all tests are successful, the system test screen displays a test summary indicating all tests have passed. Select Continue to move on to the setup screen. If any individual test fails, please refer to the Moves SLC Operator's Manual, System Test Failure Messages and Causes. The Moves SLC Interface Moves SLC Interface Overview The Moves SLC interface is comprised of multiple screens. The Setup screen to view and modify the primary operational settings of the device. The Advanced screen to view and modify advanced operational settings. The Info screen to view system information. The Main screen to display patient status and monitored values the Alarm Limit screen for control of alarm limit values, the Alarm On-Off screen for alarm on and off control, and the ECG screen to display up to 12 graphs. Setup screen. The setup screen is displayed once the device has been turned on and the system tests have passed. The setup screen is also accessible from the Screen Select button at the top of the screen. When the device is turned on and configured for a new patient, the default system mode is monitor only. 
The selection of a system mode will gray out certain settings that are not relevant to the current mode, but these settings can still be modified. If a different system mode is desired, first use the jog wheel to select and configure the appropriate settings. Then navigate to the system mode area and press the jog wheel to activate the selection. Select and confirm the correct system mode, either ventilate or O2 supplement mode. Use the back button to exit the system mode area. Note that the system does not ventilate in monitor only or O2 supplement modes. Advanced screen. The advanced screen is accessed from the setup screen. This screen allows the operator to make more advanced modifications to the patient monitoring settings. Info screen. The info screen is accessed from the setup screen. This screen allows the operator to view information regarding the specific MOVES SLC device being used, including serial number, concentrator and ventilator runtimes, firmware versions, and Massimo information. Main screen. The main screen is the primary screen of MOVES SLC and is used to display patient status and monitored values. If no button is pressed for a period of time, the system will return to this screen. The main screen displays patient status only and no functional settings can be changed from this screen. Main screen components. The main screen display shows the following. Power status icon, screen view, alarm status, O2 saturation, heart rate, end tidal CO2, inspired CO2, NIBP, patient temperatures, invasive blood pressures, fraction of inspired oxygen, concentrator flow, peak inspiratory pressure, positive end expiratory pressure, tidal volume, and respiratory rate. Main screen buttons. The available buttons on the main screen are the chart view, the source of heart rate including ABP, SBO2, or ECG, and zeroing and labeling the invasive blood pressure channels. Use the jog wheel to navigate to the button you would like to change. Press the jog wheel to activate the selection and cycle through the options. Press the jog wheel again to confirm. Each of the invasive blood pressure ports can be configured on the monitor screen to display ABP, CVP, or ICP. Parameter display. On the main screen, parameters in the normal range will be displayed as color text on a black background. Any value that is out of normal range or has an alarm currently active will have a reverse color scheme with the background displayed in color. Any unknown numerical patient values have a default display of dashes instead of an actual value. Unknown values may relate to sensors having not been connected, improper patient connections, or out of range readings. If a fault prevents data display, the fault icon, which is an X, is displayed. Alarms. Alarms introduction. The MOVES SLC has four status LEDs situated in each top corner of the device. When the system is not an alarm, the status LEDs are solid green. When the system is an alarm, the status LEDs are solid yellow, flashing yellow, or flashing red in order of priority from low to medium to high. Alarm Limits Screen The Alarm Limits Screen allows you to control the alarm limit values. Navigate to the Alarm Limits Screen from the Screen Select button. If no limits have been changed from their default values, the phrase All Limits at Default is shown at the right below the status bar. If any limits have been changed from their default values, an icon and a summary of the number of limits not at their default values is displayed and the limit value is displayed with an asterisk. Using the jog wheel, navigate to the current limit value list and press the jog wheel to activate it. The list is scrollable once it is activated. 
To modify a limit, navigate to the limit you would like to change, press the jog wheel to activate the limit, then rotate the wheel to select a value. Press the jog wheel again to confirm a new value. The back button can be used to abandon an actively selected limit without changing the value. Alarm on off the screen. Alarms can be enabled or disabled through the alarm on off screen. A summary of the alarms turned off is shown at the top right of the screen. If no alarms are turned off, the phrase all alarms on is displayed. When an alarm has been turned off, the screen will display one alarm off. If two alarms are off, the screen displays two alarms off and so on. Alarm level is indicated at the right of the alarm on off screen. A red H indicates a high priority alarm. A yellow M indicates a medium priority alarm. A yellow L indicates a low priority alarm. The letters MSG denote a message, not an alarm. The Moves SLC will also indicate when the alarm was last active. The list of alarms is scrollable once it has been activated. To modify an alarm, select an alarm. A selection is indicated by a yellow box around the limit. Press the jog wheel to turn the alarm on or off. When an alarm is turned off, a red icon containing a white triangle with an X through it will appear on the main screen. The number of alarms turned off is shown below the icon. ECG screen. The ECG screen is accessed from the screen select button. Moves SLC uses a standard 12 lead ECG system for monitoring the heart and produces 12 ECG channels. The Moves SLC ventilator. Checking the hydrocarbon filter. Before installing a hydrocarbon filter, check the four digit date code printed on the cartridge. The cartridge label is stamped with four characters, XXYY, where XX is the week of the year and YY is the year of manufacture. A cartridge more than three years old should be discarded since it may degrade the performance or cause damage to the Moves SLC oxygen concentrator. Installing the hydrocarbon filter. Always install a hydrocarbon filter before powering up Moves SLC. Moves SLC will alert you with an intake filter blocked alarm if it becomes clogged. Insert the hydrocarbon filter as shown into the rear panel of the Moves SLC unit. Rotate the filter clockwise to install and counterclockwise to remove. The filter should be finger tightened. Have a hydrocarbon filter readily available for replacement purposes. If the hydrocarbon filter needs to be changed when the Moves SLC is in operation, a replacement filter will need to be quickly inserted after the old one is removed. Operating Moves SLC without a filter will damage the unit. Do not operate without a filter. How to use the ventilator. Ventilator use. An intubated patient will be connected to a ventilator breathing circuit. A patient that is not intubated may receive supplemental oxygen via an oxygen mask or a nasal cannula in which they will be connected to the O2 outlet on the left side of the device. Ventilator cartridge and breathing circuit. The ventilator cartridge is intended to be used with a circle system to provide positive pressure ventilation for patients that are intubated. Moves SLC recycles exhaled oxygen. This cartridge is made up of CO2 absorbent material to remove CO2 from any inspired gas. The cartridge is for use with the ventilator breathing circuit, which includes the ventilator hoses, the patient filter, the endotracheal tube connector, naphion tube, and the sampling line. The cartridge is also for single patient use only. It should be discarded when an audible or visual alarm is triggered, indicating a high level of CO2 on inspiration. The alarm panel on the Moves SLC display will indicate Inspire CO2 High, Change Cartridge. Failure to change the cartridge when prompted will lead to inadequate ventilation for the patient. 
do not remove the clear plastic binding on the ventilator cartridge. Always check the expiry date on the cartridge before use. Installing the ventilator cartridge. Lift the cartridge door release latch and open the cartridge door by pulling it forward using the plastic handle on the panel. Ensure that the ventilator scrubber liner is installed. Insert the cartridge into the cavity. Press hard to ensure it is fully and securely seated. Close the cartridge door and push it in firmly. Then depress the cartridge door release latch to lock it. If the door does not close smoothly, the cartridge may not be properly seated. Open the door and push the cartridge in further and try again. Replacing the ventilator cartridge. If, during operation, the system is advising the user to change the ventilator cartridge, remove the cartridge from any packaging and have it readily available for insertion prior to making any changes to the system. On the user interface screen, Navigate to the Setup screen and change the mode to Monitor Only to stop ventilation. Remove the water trap from the From Patient port to allow the ventilator cartridge door to open. Open the ventilator cartridge door and remove the depleted ventilator cartridge. Install the new ventilator cartridge, then close and lock the ventilator cartridge door. Reconnect the water trap to the ventilator cartridge door and ensure ventilator breathing circuit patient hoses remain connected. On the user interface screen, change the system mode back to ventilate to immediately resume patient ventilation. Installing a breathing circuit. Ensure that the ventilator cartridge is inserted into the MOVES SLC. Connect one end of a Nafion tube to a sample filter on the Y piece. Use the butterfly lure connector to connect the Nafion tube to the sampling line. Attach the other end of the sampling line with a sample filter to the gas sample port on the MOVES SLC patient connections panel. Unplug the hose covers on the hose to patient and hose from patient ports and attach the water trap to the from patient port. Attach the ventilator breathing circuit patient hoses to the water trap and the to patient port on the ventilator cartridge door. Replacing the ventilator filter. The ventilator filter is a user serviceable component that must be periodically replaced if it becomes damaged or compromised, or as indicated in the operator's manual. Locate the ventilator filter cover on the MOVES SLC. Unscrew the thumb screw and lift the ventilator filter cover. To remove the filter, press the filter frame down while turning it counterclockwise. Discard the filter in accordance with local regulations. Install a new filter by pressing the filter frame into place and turning it clockwise. Tighten the thumb screw. Replacing the CO2 scrubber liner. The CO2 scrubber liner, also known as the ventilator liner, is a user serviceable component that must be periodically replaced if it becomes damaged or compromised, or as indicated in the operator's manual. Open the ventilator cartridge door and locate the CO2 scrubber liner. Fold the liner in slightly and grasp the edges. Pull the liner forward until it is out of the cavity and discard it. Place the new liner on the middle tube, orienting it such that the water collecting cavity is at the bottom. Push the liner back until it is fully seated. Ensure that the inspiratory hole matches the corresponding liner hole. Delivering Supplemental Oxygen Locate the O2 outlet port located on the left side of the MOVES SLC. Open the protective cover of the O2 outlet port by pulling it up. Locate the O2 outlet sampling adapter and connect the green flexible tubing end to the O2 outlet. Attach the sample line filter that is connected to the Nafion tube to the O2 outlet sampling port located on the O2 outlet sampling adapter. Use a butterfly lure connector to connect the sampling line to the Navion tube. Then connect the sample line filter at the end of the sample line to the gas sample port on the patient connection panel. Attach the O2 mask line or nasal cannula line to the metallic outlet on the O2 outlet sampling adapter. 
On the setup screen, configure Moves SLC to operate in O2 supplement mode. The Moves SLC section unit. Main screen section button. If section is turned on, the section icon will be displayed at the top of the screen. The NIBP icon is shown at the top of the screen as well if NIBP is obtaining a reading. Installing the suction unit. Attach the suction bucket holder to the Moves SLC unit by depressing the clips and sliding them along the side rail into the preferred position. Release the clips and ensure that they lock into place between any two holes in the row. Insert the suction canister into the holder as shown. Connect the suction hose to the suction inlet port of the suction canister. Open the protective cover of the suction port located on the left side of the Moves SLC unit. Connect the other end of the suction hose to the suction port. Connect the patient suction hose to the patient port on the suction canister. Connect the patient suction wand to the other end of the patient hose. How to use the suction unit. Using the suction unit. Once the suction accessories are set up properly, activate the suction by pressing the suction control button. Deactivate the suction at any time by pressing the suction control button a second time. You can adjust suction pressure between 100 and 325 millimeters of mercury in increments of 25 millimeters of mercury. To set the suction level, Navigate to the setup screen. Use the jog wheel to navigate to the system mode area, then press the wheel to activate the area. Navigate to suction and press the jog wheel to activate the setting, then scroll to change the value. Once the desired value is reached, press the jog wheel again to confirm. Note that the suction wand has a control vent that must be occluded by the operator's thumb to allow suction to occur. Moves SLC System Power Battery Status Icons The battery status icons show the charge of the two system batteries individually and indicates if external power is connected. The orientation of the batteries on Moves SLC, the labels, and on the screen icons shown is always as follows. Left is battery A and right is battery B. The plug icon indicates that wall power is connected. A charge icon is displayed on the battery icon if the battery is charging. If a battery icon is missing, then the battery is not connected. If a battery appears to be installed but is shown as missing on the display, inspect the battery and replace or reinstall. When an alarm associated with the system power is active, the area behind the battery status icons is highlighted with a red background if the highest associated alarm is high priority. Otherwise, a yellow highlight is used for medium and low priority alarms. Connecting the AC power. Remove the power supply and power supply cords that are stored in the Moves SLC accessory case. There are two cords supplied. A cord with a standard male and female connector supplies the power from a wall socket or line supply, such as a generator, to the power supply. This cord is supplied with a grounding prong on the male connector. To reduce the risk of electrical shock, this prong should never be removed or compromised. A cord permanently affixed at one end of the power supply with a special 9-pin female connector supplies power from the power supply to the MOVES SLC unit. The end that connects to the MOVES SLC unit is keyed to ensure proper connection. Insert the AC power cord into the front of the power supply. Remove the protective cap from the receptacle on the rear panel of the MOVES SLC unit. Insert the 9-pin connector into the receptacle, then rotate the locking collar clockwise to secure the connector. Inspecting the batteries. On the front of each battery, just beneath the handle, there is a battery condition indicator. Pressing the button on the battery condition indicator shows the status of each battery. As the battery power decreases, 
the illuminated LEDs extinguish from green, meaning a high level of charge, through yellow, meaning a medium level of charge, to red, meaning the battery is exhausted. The power supply charger should charge both batteries to 100% in two to two and a half hours while the system is running with a typical load. Note that the MOVES SLC must be operated with at least two batteries or one battery and connection to the power supply. Installing the batteries. Inspect the battery for physical damage, such as cracks, holes, and leaks. Do not use or charge a damaged battery. Lift the battery compartment latch and turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise to open the battery bay door. Push the battery into the battery compartment until it engages. Ensure the battery is fully inserted and properly seated. Close the battery bay door and rotate the latch 90 degrees clockwise, then lock it by pushing the latch in. Repeat this procedure for the second battery. If a battery requires a charge, it can be recharged simultaneously during normal operation when the MOVES SLC is connected to the power supply. Using the external O2 feature. To use the external O2 feature, prepare a compressed O2 tank fitted with the flow controller. Prepare a line of tubing that can be run from the O2 tank to the O2 inlet port on the right side of the MOVES SLC unit. Connect one end of the external gas supply tubing to the O2 tank. Open the protective cover of the O2 inlet port by lifting it. Attach the other end of the external gas supply tube to the O2 inlet nipple. Open the flow control valve and adjust to the desired flow rate, which must be less than 15 liters per minute. When using the O2 inlet, gas flows of 1 to 2 liters per minute can be used to conserve external oxygen tanks. The system should be set to vent FiO2 slightly under the external gas mix and never set to air or maximum.